Although Lee has little time for most British designers, he does have a soft spot for the refreshing experimentalism of the body map team. But even body maps seem to be reflecting the mood of growing conservatism and the need for the hard sell if you're to survive these days in the world fashion market. Lee, of course, doesn't give a damn for market forces. The more conservative things become, the more things push me apart. I'm further and further away from everything now. And I enjoy it. And I'm not going to make any qualms about it. I love it, actually. I'm, I'm sort of a very separate person, but I'm still, at the same time, sort of roped in into the same sort of um, group, the same grouping of all sort of British fashion. But I don't produce a single garment in terms of um, production, so in terms of selling to um, outside people. <laughs> Lee does make things for people on the inside, like Michael Clark, who modelled in and choreographed the body map show. He's an experimental force in British dance, and much of his work has been helped in its effect by Lee Bowery costumes, as can be seen in this clip from Hail the New Puritan, a forthcoming Channel 4 film about Clark. <laughs> Meet Lee Barry. You remember? Well, I first met him in a club, um, in the toilet of a club. He was sort of holding court. Oddly enough, he did. He said, I love your look. I knew from that moment on that it was, you know, going to be the ideal collaboration. So, would you be keen on um, sort of trying to um, simulate that look um, on some dancers I'm working with? And I said, well, well I'll try. He said, oh, great. He said, um, we're performing in three days' time. Did you know a lot about his clothes at that, at that stage? Well, the thing about Lee is, um, whenever I've asked him for a design, he designs exactly what he's been wearing that week. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that <laughs> I knew, asking him, that that's what I was going to get. Yeah. Um, all the clothes I've designed are for me. I mean, ev every single sketch I do, it's my head that's drawn on the, on the figure. And um, I, sometimes I have to scale them down, down, especially with like sort of petite ballet dancers. This is the second time I've spacked on my... So on one occasion, Clark found himself wearing bumless trousers and platform boots. But he saw the performance possibilities in costumes which most dancers would have found inhibiting. Breaking it in easy for you. Uh... Go, to go, to go. You know, I'm sort of interested in that restricted movement. Like, I've done stuff in crutches and in platforms and stuff. It's, it's, it's something that interests me because I like to sort of limit myself. I find it easier to work within limitations. The great thing about his work is it's so um, challenging and it, it challenges all sort of... I, I mean, for me, ballet... Classical ballet is all about beauty, and, and Lee's work, I think, is the extreme opposite. You know, it challenges the conventional view of what's, what looks good. And I think that there's a lot of that in the work I do. Right. So they're very well suited. Pink press rats! He 
has a, a big um, influence on a lot of a lot of fashion. But you know, things get toned down, they get um, turned around. I mean, I think he's very provocative. I mean, not shocking. I mean, just sort of, sort of in terms of the way he makes clothes, the way he looks, and everything is, is um, quite thought-provoking. Mm. Not depends how you look at it, doesn't it? I mean, I, for that as well. <laughs> Would you describe him as a designer or a performer? Or Here we go again, Mr. Category. No, he defies definition. Lee's dedication to producing extraordinary one-offs means that he's become a one-man cottage industry. He does his own sewing, cutting and buying, and is often to be found looking for material in places like Brick Lane. Chic followers of fashion wouldn't be seen dead in these parts, but here, Lee can be certain of finding exactly the kind of over-the-top material that will suit his friend, the entertainer, Lenar Pelé. Everything's in my workroom. Yes, and which planet did you visit today? <laughs> oh! Well, this is the stuff. Oh. It's this here. Well, these are the, for the video, this, this blue outfit and oh, this sort yeah. of electric salmon. I realised that Lee was the person who had to, he was the only person who could design for a sex change superstar, darling. He was the only person who could design for a mega hybrid. He was the only person who could design for an epicene dream. And that person was me. <laughs> Scrumptious. How long does it take to cook? Yeah. Bye then. Look yeah, bye. Gorgeous gown you've made for me. Oh, you like it then? Oh, Chad, it's wonderful. Oh, I try to make everything I make for Lenar as expensive as possible and look as rich and um, sort of really, really upmarket as possible. But with a twist, because I can't do anything without that. I thought it would be quite a rich sort of um, upmarket look. Well, it, well, I mean, I think you've achieved what oh, you Oh, that's good. I'm glad you like it then. Really? That's nice. And we can nip the back in even a bit more. I'd well. gladly wear the clothes I made Lenar. I'm so gladly, because I spent hours on them. I was, there's a little reticence in me when I gave them away to her. And do, do you wear them in the street? Of course well. I do. Yeah. You know, everybody moves out my path so I get from A to B quicker. <laughs> The last video was shot at Taboo, a club which Lee started just over a year ago. In that time, Taboo has acquired a reputation as the wildest club in town. For Lee and his friends, it's a home from home and a long way from Stringfellow. <laughs> Over the last few years, clubs I've been to have been called things like the Bat Cave and Hell and Heldon and lots of sort of um, really sort of oh, nasty sort of um, words that like sort of frighten you and sort of conjure up awful images. And I thought, well, that's that's quite funny, really. And I thought maybe I should call mine Taboo because it's sort of still in the same vein, but it's really sort of um, it's really taking sort of um, the Mickey out of um, out of the whole thing. So that's mainly why I decided to call it. And oddly enough. Um, since to, um, Taboo's been running, there's absolutely nothing that you can't do. So nothing is Taboo, so it's a bit of a, um, bit of a paradox, really. If dandyism's about one thing at all, it's about the creation of the perfect look. In the 18th century, the Beaux spent hours selecting the richest silks, the most wonderful lace cuffs. Beau Brummel, in the 19th century, made attention to detail paramount. I always seem to look at clubs like a catwalk, oddly enough, because um, I'll make a special garment and um, I think, Let's see, right, there's going to be dark lights in the nightclub, so I have to take that into account. And um, there's going to be people dressed up, so I've got to take them into account. So nightclubs for me are just like a way of parading my um, sort of garments and, and me. For the dandy, the creation of the perfect image, the creation of the perfect effect on arrival was all. <laughs> 